Okay, so like many of you, I'd love to know the answer to this question. Are we in a real estate bubble? In this video, I'm gonna share some data on important trends and compare the 2006 to 2008 market with the one that we're in today. I'm Kara Courtney and I'm a local realtor here in San Diego County, and I'm happy to create another video to help raise your real estate IQ. In a recent report from the National Association of Realtors, it was shared that 86% of buyers agree homeownership is still in large part what defines the American dream. But it may seem that a lot of people are kind of speculating about we're in the middle of the bubble, what's gonna happen in the future, it might crash and burn, and it's about to pop. And that ultimately, in that forecast, that could turn the dream into a nightmare. So you may not know that prior to 1950, before the 30 year fixed mortgage was introduced, less than half the country owned their own home. It wasn't until after World War II that things really started to change as many of those returning veterans used their VA benefit to purchase a home with 0% down. And since then, the percentage of homeowners throughout the country has increased to the current rate of around 65.5%. And the strong desire for homeownership, as well as factors like inflation, has ultimately kept the values appreciating overall ever since. So check out this graph, it's from Robert Schiller Online Data, and it shows the history of home price appreciation since the end of World War II. As you can see, if you're thinking big picture, it probably really didn't matter if you bought a home at the peak of the market in the 1960s. Over time, values have risen, and you can see there's a significant difference from 1960 to now. And one of the best quotes I've heard lately that really does a good job of explaining this point says, your time in the market is more important than timing the market. So funny story, I had a client once tell me about when they purchased a home back in the 60s for less than $20,000 and they were so scared of the commitment and their ability to make their payments. You know, over 50 years later, the house was still in their family and then I helped them sell it. And it turned out that, you know, the, the sale of that home was an amazing financial blessing for their family. Okay, so of course there have been cycles, you know, real estate going up and going down, but you can see that if real estate is a long-term commitment that you have, then you can see how long-term owners have truly benefited. This graph shows the only time that home values have significantly dropped was during the housing boom you know, or bust actually of 2006 to 2008. So if you look at how prices spiked prior to 2006, it looks a little bit like the current spike that we're seeing over the last two years. And I can understand seeing this similarity may lead some people to be concerned that we're about to see a similar fall in home values as we did in 2006 to 2008 when the bubble burst. And I have to admit, again, you know, my crystal ball doesn't work, so I don't know exactly what the future of the market will bring, but let's just take a look at what happened last time and compare it to what's happening today. So what caused the housing crash 15 years ago? Back in 2006, the market shifted quickly because foreclosures flooded the market, which in turn drove down values dramatically. The two main reasons for this flood of foreclosures are actually pretty simple. First off, many buyers were not truly qualified for the mortgages that they were getting. So when things turned, it easily led to foreclosures because they couldn't you know, afford the homes that they had. Okay, number two. A number of homeowners cashed in on the equity in their homes. So when prices dropped, they found themselves upside down and their homes were worth less than the mortgage on their house. So many of these homeowners walked away from their homes and ultimately that led to more foreclosures. And it was these foreclosures that ended up skewing supply and lowering neighboring home values even more. So now let's look at what we're currently seeing in our market today. And in my opinion, there are really two reasons why this market is not quite like the one we experienced 15 years ago. Okay, first, demand for home ownership is real and it's not you know, artificially generated. So leading up to 2006, as I mentioned earlier, banks were creating artificial demand by lowering lending standards and making it easy for just about anyone to qualify for a home loan or refinance their current home at astronomical amounts. And today, buyers are definitely not seeing the same thing. Those who are buying and refinancing their home face much higher standards from the mortgage companies out there. And in this chart from the Urban Institute, you can see how the amount of risk banks were willing to take back then has really drastically changed over time. Those sketchy practices backfired. Seems like everybody learned <laughs> and because it led to mass defaults, foreclosures, and ultimately falling prices. So at least from the standpoint of risky mortgages, we're definitely not seeing indications similar to this last housing bubble. And finally, people are not using their homes as ATMs quite like they did back in the early 2000s. When prices were rapidly escalating in the early 2000s, many thought it would never end. 
homeowners started to borrow against the equity in their homes to finance things like new cars and boats and vacations. And ultimately, when the prices began to fall, many of these homeowners were underwater, they abandoned their homes, and this again led to the increased number in foreclosures. And that ultimately snowballed into issues in the economy. Black Knight reports that available equity that homeowners have access to before hitting that maximum 80% loan value has more than doubled compared to 2006. And Adam Data Services also recently shared that about 42% of all mortgaged homes have at least 50% equity in them. So if home prices were to dip, these homeowners have a very long way to go before they face an underwater situation like back in the early 2000s. So what does this all mean? Being that we're not seeing the same behaviors and practices as we did 15 years ago, you know, the expectation of a huge massive wave of foreclosures impacting today's market is not really realistic. So if you're thinking about making a move, buying a home, investing in real estate, let's chat. I'd be happy to be a resource. Have a great day. I am so glad that you watched all the way to this point in the video because I'm happy to help raise your real estate IQ. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and I wanted to take a moment to invite you to check out the description below for helpful resources and to download a guide that can include things like tips, and checklists to make planning for your move even easier. It's honestly never too early to get started. If you like this video, please be sure to hit subscribe and turn on the bell so that you can get notified when we share new real estate videos each Thursday. You'll also wanna check out the thumbnails that are about to pop up on the screen for other videos that we've custom made for you on this channel. And as always, this info is for people everywhere, but if you're looking to make a move to the San Diego area, I'd be happy to be a resource. You'll find my contact info in the description below. So have a great day and I hope that you love where you live. See you guys in the next video.